And we're back for another episode of the QGIS Road to Nerdvana. This is episode 15, making a simple small scale map in QGIS. Um, so today I'm going to do again off the fly, on the fly, off the cuff. Um, I haven't prepared anything. I'm just going to show you what I do while I'm working in QGIS and uh, all my mistakes and um, uh, hopefully <laughs> my successes too. Um, so I had a me uh, message from uh, a client and friend who said that she's busy preparing a paper for publication and she needs a simple map and uh, her skills are rusty in, in GIS so she was wondering if I could whip up a map for her so basically what she asked for is uh, we can ignore all this uh, stuff here basically what she wants is a map of Africa with the following countries shaded in grey showing the country name and with the labels in the following countries. So she wants to show, for example, South Africa and SAS, Namibia and NAS, Zambia and ZIS and OCAS and Taris and so on. Uh, and she didn't ask for much in terms of uh, particular requirements, just that they may be, um, that we, she said, normal that long uh, north, etc. So I guess she wants a north arrow and some graticules. Uh, and she would like it to be publication ready. So probably we want to have it uh, as a 300 DPI uh, PDF or PNG or something like that. Uh, so can anyone help Cartoza? So since I am uh, on uh, Nerdvana Friday, I thought, yeah, why don't we use that as a nice example project um, to, to um, help her out. So uh, I'm going to try to do this within 45 minutes because that's all the time I have today. So I'm going to start off um, in a fresh profile. I don't know why Q just always puts this uh, selection toolbar at the bottom there. It's one of my pet irritations. I should go and dig into it one day and see why. But OK, so I'm in a fresh profile and I'm going to make a new uh, geo package. So um, um, and I'm just going to put it in a folder here as well. Um, um, I'm just going to make an empty folder quickly. And I'm going to call it Small Scale Africa Map. All right. And then inside of there, we'll make a, a geo package and we'll call this. Um, I think I did something wrong here. That's why I need to say new create database here. Sorry. Okay. Try again. Try that again. Um, I'm going to call it small scale Africa map as well. All right. And then uh, it's going to ask me for a layer. I just do do my usual thing where I'm just going to put some dummy stuff in here, and then I'm going to delete this layer and drop some other real data in there. Um, so we've got a geo package now, and I'm just going to go delete this layer. Uh, okay, that's a bug in the latest version of QGIS. We'll delete that later. <laughs> um, I'm using the, the QGIS um, build from source, and there's still some ongoing ticket. I did make a ticket about it, uh, the ongoing issue with the uh, um, ability to right click on layers there. So there's my world map. I just use the shortcut by typing world in the coordinate box at the bottom here. Why this coordinate box is shrunk so small as well. It makes it kind of hard to see anything. Um, yeah, if you just type world in here, it will add a world map to your project. Now, um, nothing's showing there, so let's go there. Okay. I'm going to delete this temporary one that we made and I'm going to rename this because I'm going to drop it into my geo package and I don't want to have a name with spaces in it. So I'm going to call it world like that. And then just go and drop this over into the geo package here. Okay. And then get rid of the one that I took from the QGIS built in world map and drop that back on the, on the page. Okay. So <coughs> going back to our brief, she said she would like, um, uh, um, could be a s small Africa outline map with Southern Africa with details. So basically, she's not that interested in the out countries outside of Africa. We're going to be sort of looking at it like this, but maybe we'll keep them, uh, make the map something like that. Um, maybe we could do like three different colors, the countries that are in Africa, 
countries that are um, outside of Africa and then the ones that are specific to her um, needs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a couple of columns to the table, I think. Um, so I'll just go here and just see we've already got these things here, but I just want to add a couple of new columns. So I'm going to create one which is going to be called um, uh, outside Africa, maybe. And we're just going to put, um, I'll just use an integer and we can just put the uh, one for true and zero for false. So um, at the moment, everything's going to be outside. So, um, and then, um, oh, actually let's do this. Let me, let me revert that quickly and say, don't say close without saving. Let me do, um, I'll give it a code one, two, or three, whether it's um, Africa, um, outside of Africa, or a focus country. Maybe not one, two, three. Maybe we'll just call it um, um, context or something like that. And we'll put there text. We'll start off by saying it's um, world is the context, like that. Um, okay, and then we'll go and select all the countries in Africa, and we'll give those the context of Africa. So it's just going to go like this. Um, I'm going to have to deselect some of those later. Let's see if we can do it like this. Um, uh, okay, I don't know if these count as being in Africa, so we might just unselect those. Okay, some of those are part of South Africa. Um, Okay, that's not part of Africa there. I think this is some bugs in the in the data set itself. Yeah, they seem to be linked together somehow. We might need to go and split them apart later if we're going to worry about it. Okay, so these ones that are selected, I'm going to go and um, just bring the selection to the top and then use the calculator again and I'm going to do this uh, update context um, should only do it on the selection now so I'm going to say these ones are Africa okay so we should see everything that's highlighted got Africa everything outside of the highlight got um, tagged as world and then we know we've got a few specific countries. I'll just save my work um, that I've done so far. So if I go back and look at a message, she wants South Africa, Namibia, Zambia, Botswana, and Tanzania to be um, given a special focus. So uh, we'll just go back here, select nothing, and then select those specific countries. So South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, uh, South Africa, Namibia, uh, so yeah, Botswana, Zambia, and Tanzania. So Tanzania is there, and Zambia is. Now that looks. Let me just check my geography is correct here. No, Zambia, Tanzania. Botswana, I'm looking over here, uh, Namibia and South Africa. Cool, so those those countries, those five countries need to get um, another label which tells them tells us that those are uh, in our focus. So I'm just going to go here again like this. Once more run this, and we're going to update the existing field, the context field, and we're going to say um, focus, something like this focus all right okay so we've got world and then we should have Africa Africa and we've got focus so we'll save all those changes and then let's go and just play around with symbology quickly and make some um, rules for how the country should be drawn I'm just going to remove my selection here so I'm going to change it to a categorized full and I'm going to use that context column that I created to create some classes. And now we can see um, more or less, you see that that one and that one are not quite what we want. 
Um, I'll come and fix those just now. Um, okay, so I'm going to just make these like simple white fill. Uh, using white maybe is not so great. I'll just use something just slightly darker than white. Um, and then I'll make the, uh, I did that wrong now, sorry. That was Africa. We want to actually be a bit gray. So we're going to go like this. Um, maybe something more like that. And then uh, the world, we're going to put almost white. a bit pink something like that and then the focus countries we're going to put them in a much darker co color we still want to be able to see the boundaries between them so um, something like that maybe um, all right and then um, as Madagascar part of Africa, I guess it is considered part of Africa. Um, okay, and then we want to have labels, but maybe only on these ones where um, where they're the, the ones that are highlighted. So I'm going to go to the labeling here and put rule-based labeling and put a rule here to say um, uh, focus countries. Right, and then we're going to say, um, we're going to make a filter here, which is going to just go like this. We'll go to fields. Uh, sorry, fields context uh, is focus. Like that. We can just uh, test it to see if that's going to work by putting the label on. Um, go in here we need to say um, what the label will come from at the moment we'll just put it on there okay so you can see we've just got the labels for our focus countries it's not the right label yet we'll go and fix that now and then um, um, the rest are not being labeled I'm going to probably do the labels as call out because um, or I'll, I'm going I'm to specify the placement of the labels at this point I've already invested some effort into this project I want to just go and save my style as a default style in the database uh, and I want to save my project so I'm going to save that inside the um, geo package so I'll pick the geo package and I just call it um, SAS countries like this okay and then um, you should see if you refresh this here, you should see the project listed inside of the geo package. Okay, I'm just going to go like this because I like my uh, panels to be big so I can see lots of information. So there we've got the browser, we can see the SAS countries is inside of the geo package. I still got this one which I want to delete but I can't because of the bug. Uh, and we've got the world layer there, which has now got this as the standard style. So uh yeah so i want to just add these so she asked for um these specific labels to get added to them so um i think i'll just go and make another column which is going to be the specific label for them um i'll close the attribute table so just open it up again so we'll just go to the calculator here i'll just select those um uh those focus countries quickly lots of ways I can do it but it's because there's only five of them and they're all going to be grouped together here I'll just do it like that and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to say create a new field uh, and the field name should be label uh, it's going to be a text string and I'll put in um, I'll just put nothing into them you know, I'll put sass into them for now something like that uh, and then I'll go and change them one by one. Uh, 
Yeah, so Botswana is actually going to be. Oh dear, I did something wrong. Um, I want all the others to be not labeled. So I'm going to just invert my selection and then uh, set that label to be nothing for the others like this. Okay, cool. And then I'll invert my selection back again. In fact, I don't really need a selection anymore because um, I can just go now into each one. So Botswana, I know it has to be Botswana OCAS. Oopsie. Um, it just, that's funny. It just pasted a new um, row in when I pasted for my clipboard. Which was a bit unexpected, but anyway, there we go. So, because I didn't have the the focus inside the label when I pressed paste from my clipboard, it, it actually just tried to make a new record. Zambia is going to be Zambia is this. Um, Tanzania is going to be Tanzania, however you like to say it. He's going to be that. Uh, South Africa is going to be this. And what am I missing? Namibia is going to be this one here. Okay, and then we save our work. And we can go back to this labeling rule here and tell it that we want to um, use this label column rather. Okay, now obviously there's some problems with the, how the labels are placed. I would like to do callouts, I think, because um, I think it would be nicer just to have the names just sitting just outside the map. Um, these two might be a little bit problematic. I think I'm also going to just go and wrap the text. Um, so let's go here and put a space there maybe. Um, Okay, and maybe we could get rid of that dash later. Um, that might tidy up the label a bit. Okay, and then um, the placement we want to say um, outside of polygons, something like this. Um, and I think we're going to go do a bit of a manual placement if we can. So just save our project again, edit the layer. Uh, we're going to put the labeling, use this labeling tool here, and we're just going to drag these. Uh, labels outside of it like this. So it is a bit confusing if the Zambia label is inside of another country, so I think I'm going to just drop it outside of the map like that. Something like that. Okay. Um, and then I, I th probably want to make this call out a little bit more um, uh, clearer and also just tweak that font a bit. Um, I've got a lot of fonts on here, so plenty of options to choose from. Um, let's go with this Dutch extra bold and uh, we'll make it you know, a bit bigger like this and then I'm just going to go also to here. Uh, let's see, wrap on character. I already did space. Um, we could just go tidy up the label than itself. I, I think what I might do is um, let's just go and have a look in here. So I'm just going to take away these hyphens for now. This one had an extra space in the name, so... Uh, you know what I'll do? I'll wrap it like this. I'll go here, put the hyphen in, and then use the space not as a wrap, but a, I'll use the hyphen as a space. This one here. And this one here. Uh, 
okay and then we'll just save that okay and then we'll tell it to wrap on this character here like this that looks pretty nice okay and then just the style of this uh, line here I maybe want to just thicken it up a bit so um, uh, just go like this it doesn't need to be much I think that even is fine and then um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift this Botswana one around a little bit it doesn't look quite right to me I'll just grab that and just That's one option. The other option would be to zoom into them and put the labels inside of them. But um, we'll try this one first and then see how we go. So I'm going to save my project. So I'm going to go from here into a layout. Uh, and uh, that's the second part of the objective is to create a new layout. Okay. Um, so here we go. So. She didn't specify a size. Um, it's going to be for publication, so having a portrait doesn't probably make much sense. Uh, this is a funny thing that uh, you probably miss if you're new to QGIS. So you need to right-click on the on the page and choose Page Properties to go and get uh, the page layout here. I'm going to put it in portrait like this, I think. No, that it's for a publication, so. I don't know if she, she can use the whole page or just part of the page. I think I'm going to just assume that she can do like a half the page. So maybe I should even choose like uh, a, uh, a five like that. And then I'll actually do it on landscape. And then that can sort of, I'll leave some gutters around the edge and that can fit nicely in her publication. Um, Okay, so again, I'll just save my work every time I do something of value. Uh, I'm going to put a map frame on here like this. Um, I'm just leaving some space around the edges, I think. Okay, so things look a bit different here than they do on my on my print map, right? The fonts are much bigger. Um, I want to just check again this page properties. Um, when we do an export here, I wanted to see. Um, we want to choose the the resolution. Here we go. Is it here? Um, this could be nice as well, but uh, I don't think we need to worry with that now. Um, I forgot where we set the DPI for the, the project. Um, let's see if we do it like as a picture. Okay, so when we do a PNG, we can set the resolution. When we do it, of course, when we do a PDF, we're saving it as vector data, and so the resolution is not so important because it's scalable. Um, okay, so I'm just going to look and see what we made already because uh, I can get a sense of then how to refine it. So there's the PDF. Um, you should be able to see that we can scroll into here. And, oh. and you see that it scales nicely as we scroll in. Quality looks good. Okay, uh, those lines look a bit thick and the labels are too big. So we're gonna go and change that um, and then if we look at the PNG at 300 dpi the same deal so we want to make the lines thinner and just shift the labels off the screen more so uh, first I'll just go back to here all right and I'm just going to shift these a little bit further away Just quickly pop back in here and see if that looks any better. Um, 
Zambia is still touching and Botswana needs to come down a bit. Okay, Namibia can go a little bit out as well, I think. It looks very different to what you see on the screen, right? It's um, uh, yeah, so and then we're going to go just change these label, uh, these call out lines to be thinner. Just like that again. Let's see. Yeah, not too bad. Um, right. Then she wanted a north arrow in graticules. So I'm just going to save our project here. We'll put some graticules on this here. I don't need these things here. I'd rather see more stuff here. So let's make some grids. Uh, we're going to make a new grid. And we're going to call it um, let long graticules to give it a nice name. And then we can go modify that. And I think we'll do, um, yeah. Now you're probably saying to me, Tim, why are you printing a map in 4326? That's not a great idea. And I agree with you, but we'll make the graticule in um, 4326 anyway. Okay. And then we'll make the intervals. Let's try two degrees each. It's still a bit too busy. Let's do it five. Something like that. It's got to be a really thin line like this. Uh, maybe gray, light gray. It mustn't dominate the map too much. And maybe a dotted line. Um, something like that. Uh, and probably we want to have some graticule labels around the edges. So, um, let's see. That, yeah, maybe like that. And then we do um, Draw coordinates, and now we're going to put them in degrees, minutes, uh, maybe just degrees because there are no minutes. Um, we don't actually have a, just a degree option here. We'll just do it as. Zero precision coordinate that should do it, yeah. Uh, but that doesn't look nice, so I'm going to do degrees, minutes, seconds. Yeah, that looks much nicer, I think. Um, I'm going to use a much smaller font for this as well. Um, use like an eight point font or something. Six point is fine. Um, let's have a look how it looks on the top. I think we're going to spin these top ones uh, vertical ascending like that. Yeah, and maybe we won't show on the on the left and on the bottom. And. Um, Let's also set these to, so the top one, we want to show only the uh, latitude, uh, sorry, only the longitude. And uh, I, I know they're not crossing over yet, but just for, to keep it tidy in the bottom, uh, on the right, we want to show the latitude only. Okay. All right. Let's see how our page is looking. Um, I think a north arrow over here would be good. Um, and I need to just pan this a little bit in the um, in the view frame. So we're just going to just shift it down a little bit. Uh, maybe we need to step out a smidge as well because um, these labels are just too big. That's the problem. I'm going to go and reduce the font size a bit. 
Um, so let's go back to here, to here. Let's, let's make them back to 10. In South Africa, we've got to pull it back onto the map here. too much. Let's put it to the side like this. Okay. Um, so we could do that. Um, I think I would prefer to put it in a projected coordinate reference system. So I'm just going to go and see what damage I caused by changing my map at this point to use, uh, let's use more wider, uh, like this. And that looks a bit squished up, doesn't it? Um, See if there's an Africa scale projection we could use, probably more appropriate. Africa. Ah. Uh, Africa elbows equal area conic. Oh, that looks nice. You can see the coverage is exactly where we want it. Um, let's just see what some of the other. Um, I'll try that and then see how it looks. We can come and play with some of the others if we want to. Doesn't really look much different, does it? Um, Africa, a Lambert conic conformal. Maybe, yeah. And then um, let's go look in our map and see how that looks. Uh, Yep, and then um, I'm just going to zoom in a smidge again. So our scale here is, uh, what is that, 95 million. Yeah, let's make it 100, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 100 million. No, we want to make it a bit smaller. Let's make it 900 million even more let's make it 800 700 okay and then we can just shift it around a bit awesome i'll put it over a bit like this that it can be um have a little bit of space for our for our um, north arrow and things over here. Okay, so I'll just save that. I'm going to drop a north arrow in um, over here like this. Um, we've got a bunch of north arrows that ship with skewers. Yeah. Um, I thought we had a group for them, but we don't actually have a group. Anyway, we can browse them here. Um, I think that looks fine. We still need to get some better looking north arrows in, in our default set here. But, um, I think I like that one, yeah. All right, so that's the north arrow, and we're going to align this north arrow to the map because we are using a projection. We just want to make sure that it points <laughs> in the right direction, so uh, we can just set it to sync with the map. Okay, it's already done. Um, and um, the whole thing, maybe we could just shift it down a little bit, scroll. Like that, okay. Um, 
it'd be nice to put the the map projection in here just so that it's properly annotated so we can just put a little label here um, so in here we're going to go um, CRS project CRS um, Okay, and then we could see CRS description. There we go, that would be nice. Uh, just put in front of it something like this to say. Um, Um, and then we've got to concatenate there, so we'll say um, probably uh, supposed to use single quotes. There we go. Okay. Um, and the font is way off there, and it's got a big sp um, space, funny spacing there. Let's just get the font something smaller the eight point um, let's align it to the right like that that's funny because that's uh, got horrible looking underscores in the name so uh, let's go back and edit our expression here um, Okay, so we're going to just replace the those underscores, I think. So we just look for a replace option here. Replace. Uh, we're going to search for. Um, uh, we're going to search for the underscore. So we're going to give it the string, and then before, and then the after. So we're going to. Let's say before will be underscore and then after will be um, just a space. All right. Um, and maybe we should put in also the EPSG code just to make it a bit more precise. So let's go back to CRS. Um, Okay, and then use the space here as well. So we're just going to put like this. Um, let's try that out. Okay, um, it's missing a space there as well, so I just want to fix that by putting a space there like that. Um, cool. <coughs> um, that looks quite nice, and uh, we could just do a test export quickly to see how they come out. I can even make a geo PDF out of it, and then we'll do it. Um, image export as well and let's see how that comes out let's have a look at the the rendered products all right um, not too bad for a quick and dirty map um, it looks a bit funny with the island underneath the S there and we could maybe shift that slightly if we wanted to tweak it um, and maybe South Africa could come a little bit over um, and let's try our PDF out. That looks very nice. Okay, so uh, that's kind of good enough, but I thought maybe I could also just put a little overview of the world in here and um, 
have that um, shows it in a circular circular projection. So let's just see if we can get away with doing that. Uh, maybe over here, be a nice spot for it. And then uh, we're going to zoom to the whole map. We might get rid of the labels and use a totally different map theme, I think, because we don't want the labels to show. Um, so um, let's just put the two like one, 150, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's see how that looks. Maybe it needs another. Um, couple of zeros. <laughs> um, okay, and we're going to use something, a different CRS now. So um, I want to use a conical one. Uh, not a conical, yeah, uh, uh, an azimuthal one, I think. Try like that. Yep, and then um, we could put make this as an overview map. So um, link it to map one and draw the frame as a red outline, something like that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I do want to get rid of those labels. So I want to set a separate map theme for this one. So I'm just going to just save my work and go back here. I'm going to create a new map theme. Um, uh, add a theme. We're just going to call it World or Overview. Uh, okay, and then we'll create another theme. We're just going to call we call it Africa. Um, and just create a new style here. And we'll switch back to the other style default, and I'm going to rename this to Africa. Africa. Okay. So the styles we can link to the theme. So I'm going to go back to the world one here, and I'm going to set this just to use a plain, um, a plain, uh, uncategorized renderer, and I'm going to get rid of the labels. Um, no labels and um, maybe even I'll make the borders the, the outline uh, to be no line like this let's see okay so that's our overview style and then I want to save this to that theme and then uh, let me just switch back to here. Um, replace theme overview. Yeah. And then I'm going to make another theme. Uh, I'll set this back to Africa. Ah. All right. I'm going to make another theme for this one called Af Africa. Okay, so we've got two themes. One, which I go when I go to Africa, I get this. When I go to the overview, I get that. Um, save my work and go back to the map. Oopsie. Yeah, and I'm going to set this one to use uh, the overview theme, and this one I'm going to set to use the Africa theme. There we go. Now we don't get those labels in here. Now, just to finish off, I'm going to put a circle around here and do a little shading effect on it. So, um, add an ellipse here, and it's going to go like this. Try and get it nicely around there, like that. Maybe I have to shift it a little bit. Um, I think we had a key modifier to move it just a little bit at a time. There we go. Okay. And I'm just going to make this uh, to be um, transparent fill. Uh, maybe the line could be a little bit thinner. Make it 
bit more subtle and uh, I want to put a little bit of a shadow around uh, that if I can let's see so just save my work here um, I think this needs to come in a little bit like this um, I think we've also got some bits of the map which are not in the circle, so I just want to tweak it a bit like that, yeah. All right, and then let's try to get a shadow on here. Uh, style, advanced, um, draw effects. I'm going to put it in a shadow. Um, I don't see a drawing right now. Let me see. Um, oh yeah, it is drawing. We just need to make it a bit stronger. Um, kind of a bit subtle um, let's just turn it off again you can see it but it's not doing much let's put make it bigger Okay, I'm going to leave it on there. I'm going to wrap up this session. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing me make a simple map. Uh, sometimes it's fun just to do some basic things and also do a friend a favor in the process. Um, uh, oopsie. Uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, I've got to rush off. Um, if you make a nice small scale map, share it with us and let's see what you've made. Um, if you need any help or anything, pop me a line at the at info at Cartosa. And if you've got ideas for other episodes, be happy to, to um, try those ideas out in the future. Right. Thanks for watching. Bye.